Welcome to the Collaborative Resource Hub by Wellness Provisions. I'm Amy McBride, owner of Wellness Provisions, the most badass wellness business. Tuning in to the We're Delay Dying blog, podcast edition, because who wants to read when you can have someone read to you? Unless you like using your eyeballs. Then catch every single essay over on the website. Just select ones, make it to the podcast. And I offer wellness coaching sessions if you're seeking to get healthy and ahead in life. Just jump on the website and set up a free 15-minute consult. And if you're the pill popping type, no supplements, then Well EP has you covered. We supply rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We're a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this essay or the collaborative resource hub substitutes medical advice. Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. These are my essays, my take on all things wellness written to educate and inspire. Enjoy today's essay. What does self-care mean? Social media is forcing this concept onto you if your feed is curated to anything remotely well-being based. Social media is full of colorful graphics that tell you not to focus on perfection, eliminate toxic people, or to get a massage. While these are all fair examples, I feel like people are missing the most basic point, the why behind it. It's more than just a trending hashtag on social media but may not even be appearing in your daily routine. It's a lifestyle. Separate from the influence. What do I mean by this? Stop looking at your social media. Yes, your social media may be reminding you to hashtag self-care, but unless you have great awareness around your mental health, you may be allowing negative feelings to creep in if you're not practicing self-control and discipline around your social media usage. Everyone's feed has gaps where posts that stir up negative emotions can pop up. Posts that cause you to compare what you have to someone else, to wish your body looked a different way, to get lost in a rabbit hole, eyes fixated on a glowing screen, quietly begging you to keep consuming for corporate gain, instead of to continue living in the fresh air around you, in the present moment, free. Being gentle and being conscious of what you're exposing yourself to. It's also about being aware of your perspective. If that person makes you feel jealous or inadequate because of what they're posting on their social media, notice I didn't say what they're doing in their life because we don't even know if they really are, then you need to catch yourself feeling jealous or self-loathing and turn it around. That is one of the most basic forms of self-care, change your perspective. Balance your stress levels today. Self-care within your daily routine is the epitome of taking care of yourself. When you wake up in the morning, are you sticking your finger into an electrical socket? I mean, are you rolling over in bed and immediately drowning yourself in social media static and noise that shock your system into negative emotions? Or do you gently wake up and practice gratitude for your day to come? Feeling love in your heart, smiling and telling yourself to expect good things. Do you yell and tense up in your car in traffic? Or do you feel the frustration but pause and consciously take a few deep breaths in order to stay calm? Do you eat a healthy lunch with fresh vegetables and hydrate with water? Or do you eat a processed meal because it's fast and wash it down with a sugary beverage, causing inflammation to flare up and manifest as aches and pains and brain fog? Do you carve out five or 20 minutes to meditate in your day? allowing yourself to feel free from past mistakes or future anxieties and rest in the present moment where only love exists? Or do you make excuses that you don't have time for meditating because your day is so busy because you aren't prioritizing your time? Those are a few ways that you can practice the ultimate truth that is self-care in your daily life. You make good choices for yourself. Making good choices consistently is not only a self-care practice, it's a lifestyle. Good choices are the ones that create that space around you where you feel like you can breathe or where you feel inspired. Good choices are the ones that support your long-term mental health and physical well-being. Good choices are the ones that promote lower blood pressure, less aches and pains, better brain function, and clearer skin. 
Good choices make you feel proud of yourself for doing the right thing. The right thing is the healthy thing, thus feeding into self-care versus a negative mindset. And the healthy thing isn't always the easy thing, the most convenient thing, or the most comfortable, but it's the one that will allow you to thrive and grow and expand, to love yourself because you care about yourself, to make self-care a routine and a daily practice, and to, sure, book a massage, because who doesn't love a massage at the end of the day? The why behind self-care. Self-care, if you haven't pieced it together yet, is about fundamentally prioritizing your well-being so that you may live a happy and healthy life. Self-care means honing in on both your mental health and your physical health. When you're healthy and happy, you're balanced. You're on a path towards success. You're surrounded by loving people because you are a loving person. You've cultivated love within yourself and through extending it outwards into the world, you have created the life you are in, full of positive realities and possibilities. True living, because if you're not truly living, you're truly dying, and that is a waste. If you're feeling lost, if you found yourself identifying with the less than depictions in this essay, and you're aware that you're making those choices, then congratulations, my friend, because that is the first step to self-care, inner growth, and to actually practicing self-care. You're aware of your actions and how they're affecting you, and that's fucking awesome. If you need someone to help you on your path and to drop an F-bomb here and there, a wellness coach can do that, specifically me, because I happen to be a super rad wellness coach. We can sit down together and look at every small part of your day, every small feeling, every small choice, and see how that plays into your self-care routine, or lack thereof, and the big picture that is your life. And then we can start turning dials and then putting numbers into a crazy calculator like a mad scientist on a spaceship in another galaxy light years away where time and space are relative. That is actually not an analogy for anything. I just wanted to see where I could take that sentence. But my point is this. If you want to make better choices, send me a message and let's start there. If you're feeling totally overwhelmed and unsure where to begin, book a wellness coaching session with me. I'm here no judgments in a totally safe space. Signing off, Amy McBride, Wellness Provisions.